The deck profile for what I'm about to show you is going to come in the latter half of this video, but I was very intrigued with the Villains Ruby Sapphire build from last set. I think it was a pretty fun build and it actually won an event, so props to the person who created it. But I wanted to see if I could adapt it to make it work with uh, set 6, Oswald. I do think Oswald is a bit of a gimmick right now, um, but I do think that there are some combo pieces that make him pretty effective. And in a Ruby Sapphire deck like this, you are playing, I guess you can call it the critical mass of items that you need in order to hit off Oswald more often than not. Plus you have some combo setups that you can go for as well, which we'll cover later in this video. We are going up against an aggro deck, um, but we are going first just to show you some of the combo lines here. We get the Oswald on two, which is great, um, but Ruby has a lot of items, specifically from Chapter 1, like Poisoned Apple and Sword of Truth, that are really underutilized or not really used in the meta right now, but they are removal items. And speaking of which, here's one that came out later on in the plank. This card does not need to be exerted to use the effect, you just have, you just have to pay two and then you can banish a hero or ready a villain. Now. In the previous iteration of this build in set 5, you were playing more copies of the plank because you wanted to ready up your Prince John, the one that you can tap, the one I have in my hand here, the one that you can tap it and recur an item from the graveyard or play one from hand that costs I think 4 or less. Um, but with the new Rhea coming out in this set, anytime you ink, you can trigger Rhea to ready the Prince John and then use his ability again to keep getting items back. So again, against the CPU, you know, it's not a competitive match, I'm just showing you the simulation, but Simba, the aggro threat here that the opponent dropped, is going to be able to be taken out even though it's readied by this plank so you see me use the csu to take out the maleficent that was exerted then we're going to pay to use the plank in order to banish a hero which simba is and just like that we mop up the board um you're going to see just how ridiculous this deck gets though uh if you keep watching this match so we're going to go ahead and ink again um, maui here sure because we're just going to take out all the threats regardless if they're readied or not we hit off oswald luckily again in a nice block and I think we're playing something like 20 items. We play Azure at Sea, so we're going to be able to ink again if we want. Since I have the Mauritius Workshop, I'm like, I don't even need the Hiram. It's crazy to think that in a, in a Sapphire deck, I'm actually inking Hiram. We miss off Oswald there, putting another Oswald to the bottom of the deck, and that's okay. The opponent drops a Crab, which is pretty good. Um, they're going to be able to get over the four willpower of the Sisu there because of that and take it, uh, take it out. So we're not feeling too bad in an aggro matchup here. They're only on five lower, and we're already at the midpoint of the game. We should have this one locked up, especially as we get more and more items in rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Maurice's Workshop. It sucks to hard cast it, but it's not the end of the world. Play Popsicle, draw two by paying an extra one. We draw into the big Sisu, which is really all we need in a deck like this because of ice blocks and, you know, wiping the board one-sided, be prepared. We end up drawing into a Sword of Truth, and that's really strong here. Um, you're going to see that, yeah, just being able to banish heroes, banish villains, exert... Uh, any character with poisoned apple or banish a princess like yeah you have you have wide coverage banish princess br banish villain banish hero the three probably the three most common types in the game because all princes are heroes all kings are, well kings might not be heroes but i'm pretty sure all princes are heroes and most princesses are heroes as well so you have like overlapping coverage it's it's, it's pretty strong um, and then Poisoned Apple can always exert if you need to so that Maui can take it out so we're going to continue to ink here and we're going to go ahead and set up the Prince John now and the hero. So the hero is one of the combo pieces with this uh, deck. And it's funny because the deck is so like, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but like it utilizes all of its ink in a very unique way that you don't even have the, the chance to utilize the hero here in order to set up like a lucky dime to the top of your deck for Oswald. Um, but you definitely, that, that's the play, right? That's, that's what you want to ideally set up or set up the Sword of Truth or the Plank or the Poisoned Apple, like whatever removal spell you need in terms of an item, you set it up with the hero and then the Oswald will be able to play for free when you ink for turn. So we're going to go ahead and Ice Block and yeah, I don't trigger anything else because I know I have to go for the Sisu Board Wipe and yeah, we Board Wipe off the Sisu. They get to draw off the Kuzco, that's fine. Now we're going to start to uh, quest here and like look at this look at the state of the game here um and we have full setup we have full control of the match is this overkill is this too much of a gimmick probably um it's it's I, I guess you could say it's easily disruptible too because the oswald is very vulnerable at the one willpower to any steel removal but if it just sits there in a readied state um it, it's pretty strong and even if the oswald gets removed playing the items and getting the prince john engine rolling because remember this deck was around before oswald was even a thing oswald just adds the engine i think you can definitely like keep things going even without oswald so here they play a yizma and i'm just going to go ahead and drop sword of truth pay one to draw off of workshop and then just activate sword of truth doesn't cost me anything or or i 
I, I don't have to exert it either to, to activate it. Take out the Yizma here. And then I'm going to be able to play another item, pay one to draw, get a Hiram. And again, just don't even need the Hiram here. Pay one to draw. Um, oh no, sorry, because we inked the Hiram. We get Poisoned Apple off the top. So even more ins insanity there. And we hit like a Fishbone Quill off the top. Like, yeah, it's just ridiculous. So use Fishbone, ink the... No, don't ink the Ice Block. Ink the Azerite Sea. Play Ice Block. Play one to draw again. Miss on a Maui there from Oswald. That's fine. We're gonna be able to play the ice block. Like, look at look at the item setup here. I don't even play, I don't even play Tamatoa because there's no room for it. Like, you don't and you don't need it to be honest. Like, let's just win more at this point. Like, look at all of these items. Like, again, aside from like I'll flatten them, the steel song that wipes all items. What else is really dealing with this? Because targeted item removal, you know, target one item here and there isn't gonna deal it. D do it. So here we use Prince John, recur back the Sword of Truth. So we have Sword of Truth, Plank, and. Poisoned Apple in rotation. So it's just like, no matter what the opponent plays, everything is going to get banished and or exerted with the Poisoned Apple, as long as it can be targeted and doesn't have ward. And even if it does have ward, I mean, we have the Sisu to hopefully play around that because every ward character more or less has two or less strength anyway, so we don't even need to use Ice Block on them. Uh, so yeah, in this scenario, I'm going to be able to... Nope. Okay. Oh, okay. we already Ice Blocked the... Um, the goofy play CC, take it out, and then just use the <laughs> use the Sword of Truth to banish the Ready and Maleficent. Activate the Prince John ability, replay the Sword of Truth for free, get a free draw off of the recursion because of Maurice's workshop. Um, and then if I had the Rhea and I would ink, I could ready up the Prince John for free, or I could just use just use Shield of Virtue. Now I'm going to pay two to use the Hero ability to put Lucky Dime on top of the deck. Um, I don't have an Oswald anymore, unfortunately, but you know if I did, I could ink either off Fishbone or for turn, and then trigger and get the um, uh, Lucky Dime in play for free, so I could activate it next turn because it does come into play exerted. But even though these items come into play exerted, um, like things like the Plank, uh, Poison Dappled, and Sword of Truth do not need to exert to activate their ability. They can just like banish themselves, pay some ink or something, and and you get their effect off right away. Same with Maurice's Workshop. Um, so the only things that really matter that coming in exerted uh, would be Ice Blocks, um, the Shield of Virtue, and the Fishbone Quill. Because even the Great Stone Dragon that you would bring in comes in exerted regardless. So when you play it, whether it's off of um, a follow-up, um, or sorry, off of like you just raw playing it or off of an ability, it comes in exerted regardless. So yeah, there's the Rhea. Unfortunately, it goes to the bottom, but that's okay. We didn't even get to showcase the Rhea, you, um, the Rhea ability to ready up the Prince John, but like... I mean, it's just, this is just insanity, right? Oh, another Prince John. I mean, at this point, I shouldn't even be activating Oswald because there's like literally no items left in the deck, I'm, I'm pretty sure, or like very little. Um, so I should really only be using the Oswald with the hero at this point. Regardless though, yeah, we have this game locked up. Lucky Dime, quest with the Sisu, get like six lore, quest out for a game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deck list. All right, so this is the deck list that I put together. Um, again, probably could be refined. This is just a version one. Uh, we've got 19 uninkables and 41 inkable cards. On our cost curve here, you can see we're a little bit scattered, but that's okay. This is a combo-oriented deck. You know, Ruby Sapphire kind of has this weird play style where you may not exactly play on curve. You're just trying to get to a critical mass in order to start executing some of your combo pieces. So um, it's really hard to kind of keep your uninkable count down because obviously a lot of the very powerful Sapphire and Ruby cards are uninkable. But we're playing for Oswald because obviously this is one of our main pieces that we want to start to see. For Tipo for the extra ink and the acceleration still. Only two small Sisu. Um, I don't think seeing this is as critical as other... Um, Ruby Sapphire builds because you have the items that you're actually trying to go for in order to set up the removal options. This is just additional removal plus a shift target. Uh, three of the um, Sisu Emboldened Warrior, and the reason for this one is because this is one of your like ability uh, cards to to slow down aggro decks against you or mid range decks against you. Right? You saw me drop this in that in that demo match to slow down the opponent. It forced it took out a threat and then it forced them to throw something into this as well. So it just slowed them down enough that by I think it was turns five or six, they were only on five lore and the Sisu helped to slow them down in order for uh, us to make sure that they, that they didn't run away with the game. Ideally though, your three drop should be a combo piece like the hero Hamada here. Um, you exert it, you pay two, you search your deck for an item card or a robot card, but you're searching for items. Reveal it, put it on top of your deck, then you ink for turn, and then you trigger Oswald and whatever item you just put at the top of the deck with the hero here, you get you get to play for free with Oswald. Uh, the Rhea 
you know, I think this card, got, guys, I, this card is really undervalued right now, I'm pretty sure. Like I said, I bought eight copies. I bought four normals and four foils. Um, four cost, inkable, three, three body, that quest for two. Once during your turn, whenever a card is put into your inkwell, you may ready another chosen character of yours. So it's only once per turn, so you can't like, you know, ink multiple times with like Fishbone and, and Tipo and whatnot, and then get like multiple readies. But just the ability to ready up your hero here to protect it so that it doesn't get challenged. Um, or ready up, well, ideally what you want to ready up is the Prince John or the Hiram to protect it. Um, but you can ready up Prince John, exert it again, you get two items for free. Oh, it's cost five, I thought it was four, but it's five. Um, really, really insane value. The only action that you, you're playing is, of course, the best card in, in Azure at Sea, in my opinion, Sail the Azure at Sea. Ramp, draw, whatever, cost two is inkable. I, it, my mind is blown by how good this card is. Um, but yeah, so your, your four drops here, uh, Rhea, Hiram, Prince John, then five drop, of course, Maui, staple, Ruby card at this point, and then four of the big Sisu, because like I said, you don't even need be prepared or anything. You're just going straight for Sisu wipes with uh, with ice blocks, and, and then you're challenging out whatever else the opponent has. Um, because you don't need be prepared, because now we're going to get to the spice where, where we have the item package. 18 items. And what's nice about this, guys, again, if you, this is my, like my Yu Gi Oh players you know combo decks right like one of searchable like you yeah oh my goodness we're getting we're getting that feels right uh one of shield of virtue because you can search it if you need it if you don't need it fine if you draw into it it's inkable whatever it's a card that you can ready up right having if you don't have the raya or the raya gets outed because of character removal you have an item to ready up the prince john to ready up the hero and then you can use their abilities again or keep them ready to stay safe one vitalisphere again if you just need that extra boost sometimes like maui running over a library or a queen's castle search it put it on board get the Maui up next turn take it out three ice blocks pretty standard take things down to be banished with the Sisu either one of these here and uh, empowered sibling or daring visitor four popsicle of course the best turn one in the game no I'm kidding best turn one for a sapphire deck so most likely one searchable poisoned apple you pay one you banish this item so even if it comes in exerted off of the Oswald or off of the Prince John you can still pay the one banish it you don't have to exert this item in order to use it right so that's why it's also really good and then you can exert a character if it's a princess you just straight up banish her instead so pretty strong ability then we've got one copy of the plank you could play more of this because this one is probably more relevant since like i said there's a lot of very powerful cards on the prince the princess side that are just heroes anyway so this one probably is a little bit better than poisoned apple now you do have to pay two to banish it again it can come and exert it and you can still use it right away um, but it also has the nice little ability to ready a villain. It was more applicable in the villains oriented deck where you were playing a critical mass of villains since you're really only playing Prince John in this one. And like I said, with the Rhea now, you don't necessarily need to pay that too in order to ready your Prince John and, and, and lose this item. You can just have the Rhea on board, ink for turn, ready up the Prince John with that, right? So it's free utility. Um, but this card being able to banish a hero is definitely really, really strong. Um, then we got only two fishbone quill again searchable if you need the ramp and the ability to trigger the um, Oswald by inking from hand you, Ideally, you really only want to start doing this when you can start setting up multiple uh, rips with the Oswald and, and if possible with the hero um, But yeah ramping if you need to but it's not absolutely necessary because you have these control items These are going to be your main removal options and again, if you're if you're up against a deck that you know isn't playing hero characters or all that many hero characters that are big threats, the, that's where the poisoned apple comes in. So this is where the versatility of poisoned apple, like while the, the plank is technically better, but the poisoned apple being able to exert force exertions is still pretty good because like Prince John being a three four body for four is still decent, right? You have Maui that's six five obviously, Rhea being a three three. These things can still run over stuff, especially if you ice block down their their threats and then you know run over them. Your card your cards will hopefully survive. Um, one great stone dragon again just a searchable card um, when you ink when you get ink off of this for free right it triggers the oswald as well so setting this up might be even better than fishbone quill in certain scenarios because you are playing quite a few characters right in 38 that that's almost uh, two-thirds of the deck um, then we've got one sort of truth this card is absolutely crazy you saw me use it in that demo match there against the yizma just straight up banish right a, a character uh, well a villain character and again there are a lot of very powerful villains in the game so 
yeah, good coverage between these three items, and then only one lucky dime. You'll notice that we're not playing any ramp from the deck that uh, that inks from the top of the deck, so we're not at risk of like losing these items into the inkwell unknowingly. So everything should be searchable, and that's kind of the way that this deck is constructed: is that whatever piece you need, you can hopefully search it and set it up with the hero Hamada, and then trigger it off of the uh, the Oswald. Again, it's a combo-oriented deck, so you will sometimes draw your air quotes bricks. You'll draw these cards. You'll have to like I I, I hard drew. Uh, uh, Marisha's workshop but you saw I opted to play it instead of even like getting the hero online like that's how strong like the the deck is because I'm, I'm playing so many items like this is just consistent draw yes I have to pay for it but you saw you can set things up in a certain way and it's really nice not to have to only rely on Hiram. Um, having this item on board, which is very hard to interact with for most decks, being able to draw through your deck with this is very strong. Plus, getting free utility off of like the Oswald is just insane when you when you can set it up to be more consistent. Um, so yeah, that's the deck. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, again, haven't really tested this against other people yet. I just put this together and really wanted to try to make something with Prince John work. Um, and you know the concept seemed there. Let me know what you think though if you made it this far in the video. Thank you again for watching. Quantum is out.